My name is Nicky Byrne, a Livestock Systems Researcher here at Chagas Grand, and I'm joined here today on the board with Catherine Egan, a Chagas Beef Specialist based out of Chagas Athen Rye. And today we're focusing on how to achieve the performance at targets previously outlined. And we're going to focus on a number of key areas that are under management control. And those key areas that we're going to highlight today on the board are number one, the genetics of our animal, the health status of those animals, our grassland management, and the nutrition of our animals. And we're really going to focus on how we can better manage each of these categories to help achieve the performance targets. But we want to ensure that we make the best use of the key resources available to us, our labour, our land, the facilities on our farm, and we want to really minimise the use of fertiliser and concentrates whilst maintaining high levels of live weight or carcass output from our systems. And we want to do that because it's going to boost the economic and environmental efficiency of our beef production systems and that's going to be hugely important. So I suppose we want to create potential within our systems and we firstly do that by identifying particular breeds or origins of animals be it suckler beef or dairy beef to fit into our production system. And I suppose within each of those categories there's room for improvement. So we know that there's a lot of variation in individual animal performance and that allows for allows for us to exploit their genetics. However, there was a limited opportunity to do this on our cattle rearing herds, of which there's between 20 and 30,000 herds purchasing in calves or weanlings or store animals and bring them right through to finish. They have no breeding animals present on the herd. So the commercial beef value was launched with those herds in mind. And what this commercial beef value is, it's a selection tool for non-breeding beef cattle. So it's, it's it's an estimate of that animal's own performance rather than other traditional breeding indexes estimates the performance of the progeny of a certain bull or a cow. And it's focused on carcass and feed efficiency traits. And we can see here from the pie graph the large emphasis that there is on carcass weight, carcass conformation, as well as feed intake. And they're the real drivers of efficiency or profitability on our beef systems. So that configuration you know, helps us identify the most profitable cattle for beef finishing systems. But I suppose we have to ask ourselves, does the index work? You know, are we seeing it backed up with animal performance on the ground? So we went back and we looked at the performance of our dairy beef research herd here in Chagas Grange. It's a really intensive grass-based system, finishing cattle from 20 to 22 months of age. And when we looked at the performance of five star animals in that herd versus one star animals in the herd, we found that the five star animals produced a carcass 22 kilos heavier and very importantly they did it four days sooner. So that shows that the, the index is working and that's backed up when it's looked at in terms of the national uh, performance from our population. But how do we create animals of a high commercial beef value? If we use you know, existing breeding indexes, be it the terminal index, the replacement index or the dairy beef index, those all have these efficiency and carcass traits included in them. However, it's just with different relative emphasis. And that's because, you know, they want to ensure the reproductive traits of the cow herd where we're generating these animals for. So there's an emphasis on calving difficulty, gestation, mortality, etc. But I suppose when we look at the terminal index, just for an example, if we look at the performance of progeny from five star sires on the terminal index, they produced calves that were 19 kilos heavier at weaning in comparison to, to um, one star animals. So just by changing the sire uh, use on either the dairy herd or the suckler herd, we can see the added carcass performance and efficiency that we can gain. And Catherine is now going to outline some of the benefits of the replacement index. Thanks, Dickie. When we look at selecting cows for our replacement index in our herds, we're really looking at a cow that can produce a calf every year of high live weight gain and go back in calf again. And one of the key tools to this is the replacement index. We're looking at what genetics we want to improve and what traits we want to improve within our herd and that's what we focus on within the replacement index. And when we're selecting our replacement heifers or buying and pur purchasing replacement heifers, we're really looking at the visual aspect. So is the heifer good on her feet? Has she good udder? And how they're going to perform in our herd? And based on the terminal index, we're looking at selecting for good finishing traits within 
our cattle. And whether we're selecting replacement sires or terminal sires, we're really trying to maximise the genetics within the herd. And we've seen from over 200,000 cattle that were weighed as part of the BPE scheme, which most of you would have been part of, that five star cows were 24 kilos lighter and weaned calves eight kilos heavier. And when selecting terminal sires, it resulted in calves being 19 kilos heavier at weaning compared to sires that were one star on the terminal index. Moving on to herd health, we're looking at trying to maximise the performance over the lifetime of the animal and it's really looking at trying to crucial parts of the fertility, productivity and the profitability of the farm. From a cow point of view, we want the cow to produce a calf every year of high live weight gain over the lifetime to have a profitable beef system. Looking on, we're looking at disease outbreaks are more, cost, are more costly and they end up having high labour intensively. So having a good health plan is very important. Housing is one of the critical parts of the system which can cause a disease outbreak. So having good ventilation is very important, particularly to bring in air and take away odours and gases. Having a good vaccination programme is a key part of it. Having good husbandry, good nutrition is also key before we start on our vaccination programme. Biosecurity for purchasing in animals is a key part to reduce disease, bringing it into the herd. Looking at grassland is our cheapest feed when we compare it to silage or compare it to meal costs. We're trying to maximise the amount of grass we can grow and utilise on the farm. We're seeing on pasture base from farmers that are measuring grass, the average farm is able to produce a tonne of grass. And on the top farms, there's huge potential because they're able to almost double that at 14 tonne. And this is a result of more paddocks, more grazings, the better soil fertility, good grazing infrastructure, and that they're measuring grass. And as part of the grass budgeting, they're able to determine when the deficit or surplus arise during the grazing season and act on that plan. Extended the grazing season can have a huge variation across the country based on land type and soil fertility. And we're really trying to get stock out earlier in the spring and extend the grazing season into the autumn. And this will have an impact on lower costs. If the animals are out earlier in the spring, they're grazing grass, which is our cheapest feed. They're spreading their own slurry and there's less labour involved. Compared to when they're housed, there's concentrates and silage indoors. There's the labour required. You have to spread the slurry. It's all increase in costs. There's increased animal performance when stock are turned out and overall we'll have an increased production in dry matter over the grazing season. And this will all lead to reduced greenhouse gas emissions and which is necessary for reducing age at slaughter. Just a quick message on the swore composition. We know farmers have had a hard year this year. Fertiliser prices are up, meal prices are up and as a result they're looking at alternatives. So what can be done particularly with a clover ryegrass sward? And from a clover sward there, there is benefits once we have all the pillars that I outlined mentioned with soil fertility, paddock system, good grazing infrastructure, then clover is the next step. Clover can reduce our dependency on chemical nitrogen and there is increased animal performance from clover when, a, when included at 25%. Thanks, I'll just hand you over to Nikki. Okay, thanks Catherine. In each beef system, there's a requirement for an indoor feeding period. And 25 to 30% of the animal's feed requirement over their lifetime is met from grass silage. And I suppose when we're making grass silage, you know, there's that dilemma. Quantity versus quality. But really it's silage quality that's going to determine the level of concentrate input to meet the animal growth requirements. And if we look at the table up here in the top uh, left hand corner, we can see to meet the animal live weight gain target over the first winter as a weanling, and as a finishing animal in the finishing period, you know, we can see the live weight gain targets and the respective level of concentrate needed at the differing silage dry matter digestibilities. So if we just compare a 65% uh, digestibility silage versus a 75% digestibility silage, we can see the different level of concentrate needed per day for both the weanling and the finisher. But if we take it, that weanling on a 65 DMD silage will require an additional 100 euros worth of concentrate over the winter in comparison to a 75 DMD silage. For the finishing animal, because of the higher level of concentrate input, that will 
equate to 200 euro between a 65 DMD and a 75 DMD. So silage quality is everything in terms of the level of concentrate input to meet the animal growth targets. Um, but I suppose the duration of that finishing period, when we're talking about the finishing animal, the duration you know, will determine the level of feed conversion efficiency. So there will come a point during the finishing period where the level of carcass gain will not outweigh the level of, of feed costs. So we have to ensure that we're very diligent in drafting our cattle as they become fit for slaughter. And when we talk about cattle becoming fit for slaughter, we're talking about fleshing ability. And really we want to target animals, you know, the minimum uh, uh, fat score in a carcass is two plus, right up to four minus. So we want our animals to fall in into that category. So we have to handle our cattle. And here in Grange, we handle our cattle and draft them for slaughter every 10 days or two weeks. And there's a number of assessment points on the animal's body that we need to handle. You know, it's not weight, it's the handling of the animal and assessment for fat. So we begin on our tail head. We want to see the tail sunken into the animal and we want to see deposits of fat building up around the tail head. We want to press firmly on the rump of the animal and ensure that there's adequate fat cover there. We need to push in hard on the line of the animal to ensure that there's enough fat cover and that's really represented in our strip lines, the nice dressing of fat that we see on those. We need to rub down across the ribs of the animal and ensure that there's a nice even covering of flesh over them. And really importantly, the different folds of skin present on the animal. So be it at the scrotum on our stairs, on the brisket, and maybe just there in front of the tail, those cavities of skin, we want to see them filling up with, with fat. So if you just get your hand, handle them, and you feel them, you know, increasing in terms of their thickness and, and fat depositing down there. So really, our cattle are capable of meeting their age of slaughter targets, but we have to draft them to ensure that they do that. And really, that's one area of improvement that we need to focus on on every farm. And I suppose the take home message from the board today is the role of management and the management of our key resources in meeting our production targets and also boosting our economic and environmental efficiency.